Well, hey guys, get excited. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top hybrid sunscreens, otherwise known as combination sunscreens. Before getting into it, I wanna take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Sleep and Glow. You guys know I adore their pillow. As a matter of fact, I can't sleep without it. I've been using it for several years now. It's made a huge difference, not only in the quality of my sleep, but I wake up looking refreshed. No more morning puffiness, no sleep creases or sleep wrinkles. If you're new here, you may be wondering, what the heck is this pillow? The Sleep and Glow pillow was designed in collaboration with Orthopedus. The 3D anatomic shape supports your head, your neck, your shoulders, and the sides of your face, and it results in decrease in twisting. See, with an ordinary pillow, when you turn to the side, you're gonna have your face squished there, and that twists the skin, it leads to puffiness, as well as those sleep creases. But with the Sleep and Glow pillow, you don't have that. The Omnia pillow really cradles your face. It's like laying gently on a cloud. It's made with extra comfort memory foam with improved memory effects, so it really adapts to you quite well. And the Omnia pillow comes with an additional foam layer that you can put inside the pillowcase to adjust the height if you want it a little bit higher. And the pillow comes bundled with a tailor-made Sleep and Glow pillowcase to fit the pillow, so you don't have to worry about getting a separate pillowcase. They have a 30-night sleep trial, so if you're not completely satisfied, you can get your money back. They also offer Sezzle for four interest-free payments. What sets the Sleep and Glow pillow apart from other pillows is really that it's designed to get rid of that unnecessary twisting and creasing that an ordinary pillow would put on your face leading to puffiness and those sleep creases. It's made of high quality memory foam and is designed to last five years. Most people don't realize this, but your regular pillows, um, they're meant to last maybe six months at most a year. So you're really getting quite a good value here in terms of durability of the pillow. One thing I discovered from Sleep and Glow towards the end of last year that I was shocked by how much I love it and can't go without it now is their new weighted blanket. It is like a warm hug, like a nice comforting embrace. They also recently launched some new silk items like a sleep mask, which I love those sleep masks for blocking out the light and getting good quality sleep. Check the link in my description box because I do have a coupon code for you all if you wanna check out Sleep and Glow. So what the heck is a hybrid sunscreen? Sometimes I refer to these as combination sunscreens. I like to think of them as a happy medium between a chemical sunscreen and an all mineral sunscreen. They offer broad spectrum UVA, UVB protection like both the chemical sunscreen would as well as a mineral sunscreen would but they have a combination or a hybrid of the two types of ingredients. They have mineral active ingredients, being either zinc and or titanium dioxide, and they also have some chemical filters in them as well. And I find that these types of sunscreens are really nice because they don't tend to be as irritating for people with sensitive skin as an all chemical sunscreen. A lot of the filters that cause irritation or the ingredients that are added to stabilize filters and chemical sunscreens sunscreens, they're not present in the combination sunscreen, so they're less irritating. They're often easier to tolerate around the eyes. And the other advantage that I find with hybrid sunscreens is in terms of the cast. Hybrid sunscreens do leave a bit of a white cast, but it is not as striking as an all mineral sunscreen. It's somewhere in between the heavy cast of an all mineral sunscreen and the zero cast of an all chemical sunscreen. So it's somewhere right right down the middle. Number one is a product I've been using for several years now. It is by Elta MD. It is their very popular UV clear. This is a hybrid sunscreen. It has zinc and some chemical filters. This is perfect for very oily skin types. It is a matte finish sunscreen. This also has niacinamide in it, which is helpful for redness and can calm down irritation. It's an antioxidant, so in theory it may help to reduce some of the oxidative stress that comes with exposure to UV. And this formula overall, it even though it's got zinc in it, it is a pretty sheer formula. The cast is very, very subtle with this product. It's SPF 46. I like wearing this actually in the summertime when it's very humid here. I would not suggest this, however, if you have dry skin. For me personally, I find depending on 
you know, how my skin is at the, any given moment. If I am on the drier side, then I find that this is too matte and too drying. But if you have very oily skin, this is a great one. Um, it's also good if you are prone to redness because of that niacinamide can help calm down the redness. Now this is not water resistant. So if you're gonna be engaging in sport, you're gonna be outside for a prolonged period of time, or you're gonna be doing stuff in the water, swimming, boating, whatever, I would instead suggest choosing a water resistant sunscreen. I have a water resistant sunscreen recommendation, actually several for you guys though. Number two is one that flies under the radar. I hardly hear it being mentioned. And that is the Jack Black oil-free sun guard. I reviewed this a few years ago. This one is pretty affordable. It's SPF 45, so you know, similar to the UV clear. It's $21 for four ounces. Now this particular product is water resistant. It is a lot more moisturizing than the UV clear I just mentioned. So it's a good option if you want an everyday moisturizing sunscreen screen you're somebody like me who likes to just put on sunscreen and not have to worry about you know it being dry or anything this would be a great option it is a little bit shiny but in the realm of water resistant sunscreens it's not as shiny it's not greasy it's pretty lightweight and comfortable to wear easy to tolerate around the eyes no burning or stinging and because it's water resistant with sweat it's not going to run into your eyes either this product has some plant antioxidants in it that may also help reduce oxidative stress in the skin upon exposure to uv as well as pollution and other environmental stressors. All right, number three is one I discovered last year, and I did not expect to like this as much as I did, and it is the Epiance Ultra Shield Lotion. $26 for 2.5 ounces. You know, Epiance, it's one of those medical grade skincare brands, and I say that in air quotes because medical grade, it doesn't speak to anything about the quality of the product per se. It's really just a type of marketing and it tends to come with a hefty price point. Anyways, so it's a combination sunscreen. It's got linseed oil in it, which is an emollient that has antioxidants that may help with reducing the burden of oxidative stress upon exposure to UV. This product is water resistant. It's really comfortable in the sense that it's lightweight. It's not greasy. It's not shiny whatsoever. It's actually pretty similar to another longstanding favorite of mine. As far as the way that it looks and feels, uh, the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45. I've been using this for a long time. They also make a tinted one that is a favorite. It's very lightweight, it's not greasy, it's not shiny. Again, it's gonna have that cast that is subtle on pale, medium to pale skin tones, but maybe more noticeable on deeper skin tones. Now this product, as well as the tinted version, they have an odd odor, kind of like a plastic pool float. That odor fades very quickly after you put it on, but just so you're aware of that. that. Now in contrast to the Epiance one, which in my opinion, they look very similar, they feel very similar on the skin. This one's not water resistant and this one does have niacinamide in it which is you know a theme in a lot of skincare products i do know that many of you have irritation with niacinamide so you would want to avoid this product as well as some of the others that i'm mentioning here where i point out niacinamide it's a really great product for just an everyday moisturizer. It's not water resistant though. So again, if you're gonna be participating in sport, you're gonna be doing water-based activities, or it's just like really humid, then I would not suggest wearing this. That being said, on days where I have worn this and it is sweaty, it doesn't run into my eyes or anything. I don't get burny eyes, even though there are chemical filters in this because it is a hybrid sunscreen. Um, but this brand, as a side note, don't sleep on it because they have a lot of good skincare products. They're like the same formula as some of the high-end expensive, again, air quotes, medical grade skincare products. They're basically the same formula, uh, but at a more affordable price. And this is a great product. They also have a neck cream that I was shocked to uh, come to love because I was always like neck cream, whatever, but it's really good. If you have like fine lines on your neck, highly recommend their neck cream. It's super moisturizing. You can use it on your face as a side note, but it's marketed as a neck cream. It's very moisturizing. It's very good. Very, very good. Yeah, this brand, don't, don't sleep on it. And they have a they have a program or a thing on their website, if you like this kind of thing, where you can get 
the product auto sent to you every couple of months, I think, and you end up saving. So, you know, if you're somebody who likes to experiment with different products that may not work for you, but I know a lot of you guys have fallen in love with this sunscreen and you started doing the auto ship thing. So you get it, you know, every couple of months or whatever, and that's basically it for you. You don't have to worry about running out of sunscreen and you, that you've, you've told me in the comments that that works out really well for you and you save any, even more. All right. Number five is one that comes from Europe. Um, I love this product. Um, and I got it actually on this website, Look Fantastic. And they have Ultra Sun on there. Now, this is their uh, anti aging face SPF 50, water resistant. Uh, this has some really good chemical filters in it. Um, as a side note, it has Tinosorb M and Tinosorb S. See, those aren't approved for use here in the States because of our weird issue with chemical sunscreens. Has Juvenal T150 and Juvenal A+. Juvenal A+, along with Tinosorb, you know, Tinosorb S and Tinosorb M, you're gonna get really, you know, a, a nice array of filters there for not, not only UVB, the burning rays, but the UVA wavelengths that are especially problematic for getting into the deeper layers of the skin, destroying collagen and whatnot. And you know, a lot of old school sunscreens from back in the day that didn't protect against UVA so well. Um, anyways, this is a good option. Now the mineral active in this is titanium dioxide. And I, I have to say of all of the you know hybrid sunscreens that I'm reviewing here, this one has a more noticeable cast than some of the others. And I think it's because titanium typically has kind of a white flash effect to it that you're getting with this. So if you have a deeper skin tone, you may not get along well with this. Um, it's also got um, ectoin in it. I'm not so familiar with that ingredient. It's an emollient and I think it's an antioxidant as well. This also has grapeseed extract in it, an antioxidant. So they make some claims about it protecting against infrared and blue light. Those are things that do cause free radicals. Those are things that, you know, when I'm referring to environmental exposures, these are other things besides just ultraviolet radiation that can lead to free radicals in the skin. But it is a bit of a broad reach to say that a product like this protects from those. They're kind of banking on the antioxidants helping to reduce the burden of free radical damage from those exposures. Um, but you know, that that is, that's kind of a bit of a reach. This product is a, a little bit shiny, but it's not greasy. It kind of has a matte finish to it. If you wear makeup, I would say you would, you would find that this would go under makeup well. It doesn't like roll up, otherwise known as pilling. It doesn't do that. It stays on the skin really well. Nothing that I've mentioned up until this point, as a matter of fact, pills. Everything so far is pretty adherent to the skin. Number six is a Japanese favorite. Alley Extra UV Gel, Alley UV Extra Gel, Zinc, Tinosorb S, Juvenal T150, and Octinoxate. Now this is a water resistant sunscreen, but this formula I adore. It is shiny, you guys, it is shiny, but it's not greasy. And it almost makes your skin have like, almost like a plasticky look. Um, which I kind of like. You may not care for that, but I kind of like it. I discovered these Alley sunscreens a few years ago, and I, I, you know, I get them on Yes Style, and I don't know what I was expecting, but I keep going back to them. They're that good. If you have oily skin, especially if you live somewhere humid, these Alley sunscreens, they're by the brand Canabo, definitely check them out because they absorb you know, they're, they're kind of quick absorbing, fast dry gel type vehicles that don't, don't kind of slow down the rate of sweat evaporation, which can make you feel overheated. Speaking of Japanese sunscreens, Skin Aqua UV Moisture Milk. Now this is a lot thinner in consistency in comparison to the Alley product. Um, it's again, water resistant, like, like the Alley product, SPF 50. This one, a touch shiny, but not as shiny as the Alley one, uh, you know, spreads onto the skin easily, which I find people run into issues when sunscreens don't spread well on the skin. That's really where it becomes more of an issue that you can develop that pilling, rolling up of the sunscreen, especially if you try and layer it on under, under, under makeup. It has hydrolyzed collagen in it, a humectant. 
very affordable. It is definitely worth trying out. The cast is very negligible. Uh, it, it may be noticeable, again, if you have a very deep skin tone because it does have zinc in it. It has Uvenol A+, that is a great filter for UVA1 and UVA2. Those are the two, you know, kind of families of UVA wavelengths. So you get, you know, good protection against those UVA rays that come in through window glass. You know, so if you sit by a window, um, the sunscreen has good filters for blocking that. And those are the rays, again, that destroy collagen and cause a lot of free radical damage in the skin. All right, so the next one is an American uh, moisturizer that I have talked about for years. It is a CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. Now, a word of warning, not everybody likes this. Some people, it's their holy grail, but a lot of people have numerous complaints about this. So I will point out what those are in a moment. So this product, as far as, you know, it's a combination sunscreen, obviously. It has zinc and a, a, a fair number of filters. It has octocrylene, homosalate, muratamate, and octinoxate. It has ceramides, as do all of CeraVe's products, and it has niacinamide, again, which is good for redness, hyperpigmentation, warding off oxidative stress, also good for oiliness. This formula overall is good if you have either dry skin or oily skin. This is basically a good moisturizer that happens to have sunscreen in it. It's not water resistant, but otherwise, as a day, as an everyday moisturizer with sunscreen in it, this is a great one. Now, people have complaints about this, and a lot of a lot of people ask me. You know, a few years ago, CeraVe was bought out by L'Oreal, and a lot of people feel as though this changed. Personally, I didn't notice any change, texture, consistency, wear, nothing. So for me personally. I, this is the same. I've had no, I've never noticed any difference. I love it the same, wears the same, etc. The other complaint people make with this is that it burns and stings. That's the case people, you know, people have that issue with a lot of CeraVe products. It could be the niacinamide. And then the third thing that people, a lot of people complain about is that it clumps up, doesn't spread well on the skin and peels under makeup. It is a little bit it's kind of a thick consistency and cha more challenging to spread on the skin. So you can get that heaping up effect with this. I have noticed that, but I, if, I if you take your time with it, at least if I do, if I take my time with it, um, you know, don't put a big blob on and try and spread it all over. You take your time, get a good layer, and allow it to absorb, I don't get that, that clumping thing. But it does take time spreading it on the skin. So if you're pressed for time, you know, you may find this to be a bit of a nuisance. This one definitely is worth mentioning because it's one I have used since like college, end of high school. Uh, mentioned it in my Userin, best of Userin video. It is their daily protection face lotion. I don't ever get the clumping with this. I've never had that issue. In contrast to CeraVe AM, the spread on this is superior. I mean, it's it's a little bit more of a fluid, lightweight consistency, so it glides on over the skin well. You're less likely to run into that clumping effect that you can get with like the CeraVe one. A lot of you guys tried out, I think after a iHerb video of mine, it's super affordable. On iHerb, I think it's $8, it's, you know, $8. On Amazon, it's $7.79 for four ounces, which is a really good price. Um, I even saw comments, uh, reviews on iHerb saying that you guys got this because of my videos. And you know, somebody left a review on iHerb site saying how much they love it and that they heard about it here. So this is one, if you, especially if you're on a budget and you're looking for a daily moisturizer with SPF, try this one out. It's very, very good. This is a favorite of mine. All right, and then number 10 is the Olay Daily Facial Moisturizing Lotion, SPF 30. This is a hidden gem as well. You know, I love to rag on Olay anytime I go into the store. I like to complain about how many products they're always pumping out left, right, and, and everything. But they do have, they do have some good ones. And this product is exceptional. In contrast to other Olay products, it's actually pretty affordable. You know, Olay, they get, they put out these products and they charge these exorbitant prices and you're like, whoa, slow down. You're supposed to be a drugstore brand. But this one is definitely one to, to try out if you're looking for, you know, I put this in the category as an everyday moisturizer that happens to have SPF in it. It's not greasy, it's, it's not even shiny. I mean, it's just a nice moisturizer. It's good if you have dry, oily, and or combination skin. 
easier to tolerate around the eyelid scan. Those are the, my 10 favorite hybrid sunscreens. A few points here I will make. A lot of these products, most of them, have antioxidants in them. And I will point out, I've said this before, when it comes to sunscreens, it's questionable as to whether or not antioxidants in the sunscreens actually get into the skin. Because, you know, sunscreens, they form a film on your skin that may limit penetration of, of antioxidants. There was a study a few years ago showing that antioxidants in sunscreens didn't really do anything as far as reducing you know, free radicals. However, there are some other studies that show objectively that sunscreens with antioxidants uh, minimize sun damage more so than those without. So it's kind of up in the air. At the end of the day, they're certainly not harmful unless you develop an allergy or irritation to them, but don't spend a lot of money on a sunscreen that it, you know, is kind of selling you their antioxidants as a selling feature, um, you know, because whether or not they actually work in the sunscreen, it's hard for them to validate that. The other thing I will point out is some of these I've, I've mentioned are good everyday moisturizers that happen to have SPF. And, you know, there there's this idea out there on the internet, some people have that moisturizers with SPF are not enough. And they certainly are provided you apply them with sufficient density to get a good layer of protection on and you apply them to all sun exposed areas. People are more apt to be underhanded with moisturizers that have SPF in them, like skip their eye, you know, around their eyes, skip the sides of their face. So, so long as you apply it like you would, you know, a sunscreen, then it's more than fine to use, especially for everyday use, like days you're mostly inside, um, you know, it's fine to use that. You don't have to have like SPF 100 water resistant to, to be sitting indoors all day, you know, maybe intermittently going outside to take out the trash. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments if you are a fan of the hybrid sunscreens. Like I said, I think they are somewhere, they are a happy medium between the chemical sunscreens that some people find irritating um, and the all mineral sunscreens that leave a heavy cast. My goal here is to share with you guys as many options for sunscreen as possible to help you navigate them and find one that works out for you. Um, let me know in the comments though if you are a fan of the hybrid sunscreens and don't forget to check out Sleep and Glow. They have been a game changer for my sleep, reducing morning puffiness. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>